Did you know that the biggest peach ever measured weighed in at almost a kilogram? I mean, like, that's as much as like a bag of flour. But it wasn't the biggest fruit ever recorded. Anyone know what that is? Well, that accolade goes to the pumpkin. Yes, the pumpkin is a fruit. And the biggest one ever came in at more than a ton. That's more than a thousand kilograms, like as much as a small car or a giraffe. Now, of course, James's giant peach was much more massive than that. Imagine, after it came off the tree, it rolled down the hill, smashed through a chocolate factory, kept on rolling, went off a cliff and plummeted into the sea. Now, my question to you is, would a peach actually float? Or would it sink? What do you think? Float or nope? Now, while you decide, I want to introduce you to a word. And that word is density. Now, density just means how much stuff there is in a particular amount of space. Okay, so for example, if you had a lot of stuff squished into a certain amount of space and it weighed quite a lot, you'd be like, whoa, that is really dense. But if you only had a little bit of stuff squished into that same amount of space, it would be quite light in comparison. And you say, it's not very dense. Now, here's the thing. If something is more dense than water, it will sink. And if something is less dense than water, it will float. So what do you think? Do you think a peach is more dense than water and it will sink, or less dense than water and it will float? Let's put it to the test. All right then, so in science, you know, you wanna take a sample of something so you can do a test based on what it really is or could be like. So we've got our peach, now we also have our ocean. But it wouldn't be a proper ocean without a bit of salt. Yeah, and we might also need something to stir it with. Yeah, okay, so let's put some in. Give it a stir. Okay, now we have our ocean. Let's put it to the test. So what do you think will happen? Give a thumbs up if you think it will float and a thumbs down if you think it will sink. Let's try it. Are you ready? Okay, three, two, one. So we know that a peach can float, but can we get a peach to fly? Well, in a story, James mentions connecting it up. It's just like balloons. Well, we have one here. Now this balloon is filled with helium. Now helium is less dense than the air around it. And because it's less dense, it makes it want to float, okay? And that float is because it feels an upward push and that force we'll call lift. But the opposite of lift, we've got a downward force caused by gravity, okay? And that is weight. So if we were to add a weight, like this peach, to the other side, now we've got a tug of war between the weight pulling down and the lift pulling up. And whichever force wins is the direction that it will go in. Let's see which way it goes. which means the weight won. Now, here's the thing. You don't always, always have a winner. Sometimes you can have the weight pulling down balanced by the lift pulling up. And if those two forces are in balance, we say it's neutral and it neither goes up nor down, but just floats in the middle like that. There were some real clever scientists at a university and they thought they'd calculate just how big the peach was and how many seagulls you might need to get that peach to fly. Do you know what they worked out? 
Right, get this. Hold on to your hats, kids. Chum, chiddlers, people, everybody! The peach, we know it's as big as a small house, but did you know it would have to weigh about 500,000 kilograms? That's 500 tons. Let me put it another way. That's as much as 80 large elephants. 80 large elephants! Right, now how many seagulls would you need to carry 80 elephants worth of peach? Well, this is the answer. Two and a half million seagulls. 